It's the 31st of July, 2021, and you're listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we are back with another episode of The Future of Photography. I'm Chris, there's Adrian, there's Imar and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. The whole gang. And I have a, a, a fair warning to those who listen to this episode. I, mm. I would uh, say it's probably better video this time because we want to look <laughs> at photos. The thing that we... If you, if you've read the title, Before and After, and that is uh, what we're going to do. We are going to look at photos... Um, and uh, how they came to be, as in there's a result, there's a final product of sorts, and that has undergone some transformation in some way, and uh, I'm pretty sure we are all very different <laughs> when it comes to these transformations. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's worth just just comparing a bit, or maybe not, but just looking at how we each of us get there approach this and get there mm. um is everyone ready yes yeah. absolutely we have a whole ready as we'll bunch. ever be <laughs> we have a whole <laughs> bunch of photos to go through so um uh, it's a race then <laughs> it might get a bit frantic but we'll we'll see for that so um let me pick that let's pick out here is um the resulting photo by adrian that is a what are we looking at a mural we are, yes, uh, looking at a, a mural. Uh, this was taken uh, on a uh, walk through London a couple of days ago, uh, painted uh, on, under a railway bridge uh, on some bricks. And uh, it is a picture of, uh, of the torso of Superman as he pulls his shirt apart and shows the logo on his chest underneath. Except in this case, uh, it is not the Superman logo. It is a logo for the National Health Service. Um, this is a, a great, great it's, it's a great piece of art um, and it celebrates the work of the National Health Service during the pandemic. Um, and uh, it's, it's not certainly not the only uh, piece of street art I've seen that celebrates the National Health Service, uh, but it is possibly the best one I've seen. Actually, It's nice and colourful. <laughs> it's really good. The colour is great. Snappy. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so it's a street photo. It's, it's not just it's not just the, the mural. It's also a person walking. It's a red uh, rubbish bin. And uh, yeah, uh, a dumpster right next to Superman. I don't think Superman changes it's an in a dumpster, but or a yeah. bridge, is it? <laughs> I think yeah. he prefers a phone booth, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a bit smaller than that. Um, so uh, we have this is this is your final result. This is what you ended up with. That's right. Yes, yes. So let's go back in time. Um, you 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 sent three for this one. So this is the second one. I did. Okay, yeah. so this is the straight out of camera JPEG. Uh, uh, as previously discussed on the podcast, I'm currently enjoying the Fuji X weekly recipes uh, for the okay. JPEG engine in my camera. Uh, and this is the straight out of camera JPEG uh, with my own variant of what's known as the Kodachrome recipe. So uh, uh, pretty much enjoying that at the moment. That's made a lovely um, job of the brickwork there, hasn't it? The colour of that is lovely. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like yeah. It's very true to... Have you ever um, tried adding grain to your uh, your Kodachrome? Uh, yes. So the the later Fuji cameras actually have a grain option in the JPEG engine. You can either, in mine you can either have weak or strong, um, and this has got a weak level of grain added. I think mm. in the very latest Fujis you get uh, you get to choose the grain weak or strong, and also smaller or larger. <laughs> so you can t choose the size and strength of your grain and on a mm -hmm. on a uh, a current model Fuji. All right, so so our question to everybody, Chris. I know you're you're gonna roll your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Side bar question: When editing uh, digital pictures, how does everyone feel about the nature of adding grain? Um, is it something that will eventually go away, or is it something that is a kind of natural um, softening for us to kind of get a little more, um, a, a little closer to the way we see? Ooh, I, I have an answer question. to that. Of course, I am rolling my eyes because I'm a film shooter. <laughs> um, but on the other <laughs> hand, grain will also help you, especially with photos that have been upsized and that kind of lack the, the, the final, the, the ultimate level of sharpness that you want. Um, grain adds perceived sharpness. So ah, yes. 
it does yeah, it does hide imperfections in a photo so i will mm. use it for that i do that's an interesting process i like the hiding imperfections bit as well yeah I really um, like that. the <laughs> that one of the things that i think is is it, given that we are either all film shooters or certainly you know grew up shooting film um I, this might be one of those generational things um but it's for for me i i like it i think it's it, it makes it hurt my eyes less if it's got a little bit of grain by which i mean that's sometimes a digital image old. can be so hyper that's hyper why. real <laughs> no, well maybe maybe it's, it's the expectation isn't it it's, yeah, yeah. It's like the horror that goes through you when you see a movie that's been shot at 60 FPS, you know. <laughs> I would only say that if you're looking at a print of a um, 8 by 10 you know, one of those massive prints, 5 feet by, you know, 6 feet, that is tack sharp and amazing, better without the grain because it's just amazing in its scale and accuracy. Yeah. But once you start to scale down into more familiar territory, adding grain is really a significant plus in terms of the, the way uh, our eyes um, fall into a photo. That, that's the best way I can kind of describe it. And that goes for cinema as well as, um, you know, still, it just depends how we were brought up. That's why I asked the question, is it something that will eventually go away? Mm. Good point. Maybe it, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Yeah. Who knows? So I bet it'll, pro it'll probably depend on what Ari decided to do with their cameras, isn't it? Because everybody <laughs> follows Ari. So <laughs> okay. So this is this is your result. This is the JPEG um, that the camera made. Different um, yep. aspect ratio. So you crop the result. Yeah, so the camera shoots, I, sh I tend to shoot with my viewfinder set 16 yeah. by 9, um, although the sensor is a 3 by 2 sensor. So the next one will be the RAW that came out of the camera, or at least raw, my, yes. my computer's interpretation of the RAW. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, it has, for me, far less atmosphere about it. Um, it. It's a good RAW capture in the sense that it's got all the data that I need, but it certainly wasn't the image I wanted to make. Um, so, so yeah, we, the, we tighter, the, from, the tighter um, the crop, crop is works lovely. really well on this one. Yeah. So I, I like, as you know, the 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 more um, movie oriented crops. I, I do very much like a, a two three five to one crop. No, not two three. Four, yeah, two point three five probably mm. would be a better way to say that, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, that that yeah, I try and, try and think with that. It's another reason. Think with that in mind, or shoot with that in mind. It's another reason I have a sixteen by nine setting on my viewfinder. Um, uh, my edits, you know, to to the raw often are you know the colours there because it's because it's Superman. The red and the blue are the colours I wanted to draw out. Um, and so I've played around with the saturation and the luminance. Often I'll reduce the luminance of the colours um, because uh, individual colours to to make them deeper. So you know, for me, that that makes them stand out more. I, I noticed between the one from the camera and the final that you desaturated the green in the sign on the left. That one's <laughs> different. Uh, yeah. So so I was trying to draw out. That might have been accidental, or yeah. Oh, okay. But the what I was trying to draw out because it's Superman is the blue and the red. So I was I was adding saturation and decreasing luminance for the blue and the red to yeah, to, that, that, to that give them good. a bit more punch. So the green the green in the sun was kind of collateral damage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> you could have added a little vignette to it to kind of push the eye. Just a touch. To, to, to be to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen that sign until you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Imar, yours is next. This is your final result. Yeah, that's my final result. Yeah. What yeah. are we looking at? A that's, beach scene. Um, you're looking at a beach scene, and what I really wanted to try and do here was kind of pull out the mist that's in the picture so if you if you, if you want to show the original picture pull out as in emphasize is, like yeah i just sort of here's it, the it was the strangest it was the strangest weather conditions okay um, so so for anyone watching this um on youtube at its fullest resolution you will notice that so it's not just the mist is pulled out it has grain i can see grain mm, in that. and lots of texture yes yeah um which is what I like. Um, and warmer. Yes, yeah. It's warmer. It's a, it's a yeah. slightly different crop as well, which... Yes, I took a little bit. Um, I took a little crop down in it. Um, I started off in um, with this one in Lightroom and just... Um, I think that's 
that's after Lightroom. It, they didn't actually upload in the in the version in the in the order that I labeled them in the album. So oh, they, it it's doesn't a bit doesn't matter. But, tell, tell me which one to open. Yeah. So um, yeah, my original is the palest one there with no with no border around it. So that yeah, a nice. beach in. Connemara and with beautiful rock formations and the people in the distance because um, as a rule I don't generally like to get any people in my picture but I quite liked um, the positions of these people like the little guy that's up on the top of the rocks there on the left of the picture just at the end of the beach I think the the line of sand sort of pulls your eye towards yep. him it's like and he looks landing, like he's looking out to see and then for your eyes. Yeah, that sort of brings you down to the person who's in the water by the rocks. And then to the very far left, there's two or three people like, um, you know, sitting on their deck chairs or whatever. So they were the only other people that we shared the beach with that day. But it was the it was the crazy conditions of of weather that I've never experienced before. So it was really, really hot in the middle of a heat wave. But this mist, this cooling beautiful mist that kept um passing over but then like evaporating again and then everything would be clear and then 20 minutes later this other big waft of mist would come along cool you down and you can see it in the distance there i have no idea what the name it's not sea mist it's not as um it was different it was not like nothing i've ever kind of been around so aliens yeah i was aliens for sure <laughs> More painterly too. Oh, the, Amar uh, has just dropped out of the call. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> well, while she, while she tries to dial back in, why don't we look at some <laughs> pixel art? <laughs> so what's what's this about? This is a a uh, just a, a cityscape uh, with some beautiful light coming through the ah, trees. Amar's back in eight bit. Did I drop back. off? Or? Yes, you did drop off. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay, my let, apologies. Mid-sentence. Took me. Uh, back to you. Um, so <laughs> took me a moment to realize. So we have the why you did it, because it was such an interesting yeah. weather so phenomenon. Then, uh, but how did you do it? What did yes, you do Yes, okay. It? So into Lightroom first for the kind of uh, exposure tweaks and to sort of um, play around with the color a bit, to pull out some detail in there and to put a small little bit of texture on it. But then that's not enough texture for me. So I moved to <laughs> mixtures, which I love. Um, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. So maybe five, six layers of mixtures. <gasps> oh, really? Different, wow. you know, very small amounts. As you can see from my slider there um, on the right hand side, it, these are small, tiny amounts, but I like to layer it up. And that that's the final um, layer, I think, in mixtures. So the next picture would be um, that is oh, oh, sorry, that's after mixtures. The next one is I, I go back into um, Snapseed, which is my go to app, as uh, everybody probably knows now, uh, just to put a final um, I, I kind of check the straightness of the horizon once again and all those little things. And if I can pull any more detail out at that point, then I'll pull it, I'll pull some more detail out and maybe a tiny vignette on the end, which is and there's a small little vignette. on. And that. this is an entirely mobile workflow done. you do here. Uh, yeah, with the iPad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So back so to Lightroom on my iPad as well. Lightroom and mixtures. Mm -hmm. um, so back to Jeremiah, your pixel art. Yeah, QR code. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, this this particular uh, image, if you look at the edges, um, I wanted to get a p pixel art that looks like uh, it was done on a metal plate. This looks like a like a like a treasure map of sorts, a, a digital yeah. eight bit treasure map. Yeah, uh, you know, if we step through, I mean, it's it's an abstract, but if the further you get from it, the more it uh, makes sense. This is uh, mm -hmm. this was a um, a mat I used uh, to kind of blend the color um, of the light coming through with the actual background of the kind of sepia, and to add the plate. And if we step even further back, oh, it gets colorful. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, but uh, this was a little too brash 
for me uh, when I experimented. <laughs> I did use the, uh, the light, and I'll explain uh, the steps in a moment. Um, so what I did is I converted uh, both the uh, light and the background into um, their relative uh, kind of masks and blended them together, probably in Lightroom. Um, no, probably photo Photoshop, uh, just a simple layer. And then we step back again. Um, that was the conversion uh, from the uh, contrast corrected image that I had shot. Now you can start to see the, <laughs> the, rea mm. the quote reality mm. of the trees. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you squint, then you can see something like this. <sighs> That's right. This yeah. is a contrast. Uh, I, and and um, I, I probably used a little bit of, of uh, adjusted, a uh, little bit of adjusted sharpness, a little bit of adjusted contrast, uh, but I left it pretty much uh, alone, just um, focusing on exposure, just styled. There's bit. one more version where where you straighten this. This is right out of the much. camera. In this case, an iPhone just right, boom, just came out like that. So so you know, I started well. with the iPhone, uh, ended <laughs> with that, and uh, you know, good time was had by all. I mean, I I did uh, use the Lightroom for correction. I used Photoshop for layering. I, I brought the light in using a uh, an app called Lens Light, which I did on my iPad, uh, which al allows you to control highlights. And, what is the um, what is the pixelation filter that you use there? Is that yeah, part of Photoshop case, or is it a third party? Uh, no, it's a third party. I think there I used uh, something called Eight Bit Painter. Eight, okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. But but there's uh, there there are many and you can set different parameters. Some of them are are not as effective in terms of their blocks, and others are uh, really significant. Um, I, I was ex I, I was I had been exploring this because I I am building a um, a rather interesting um, drop <laughs> for mm -hmm. for Christmas, uh, all based on characters that I've converted from reality into what we call voxes, which is a three-dimensional version of 8-bit and put them wow. in a visual <laughs> So this is boxes. so so next up next up is Jeremiah doing Minecraft photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if it, my, Minecraft <coughs> Minecraft has a, has a bit of a Minecraft mm. wipe. Really right does. Sure. So, so, well, my, yeah, Minecraft. Uh, those those do use that kind of voxes yes. uh, in, in in terms of the aesthetic, and I'm mm. obviously interested in all matter of ridiculous. <laughs> I, my my daughter Jeremiah, who charges very reasonable consultancy fees for Minecraft <laughs> yeah. advice, um, will will be at your disposal should you need her. <laughs> what about Roblox? She does oh Roblox God, too. Yeah, yeah she plays Roblox. Roblox all the time too. <laughs> Um, but it, it, but and by the way, just just for uh, giggles, if you scroll right down to the bottom uh, of the, um, uh, here you go. There you go. There we <laughs> go. It's us. It's That's why us. I took that screenshot. Now I get it. <laughs> wow, I look amazing. <laughs> uh, uh, feel free to use this, Adrian. You so look, you I look a bit weird in the face. Confused. I don't know. <laughs> I, th I think yes. I think my my prominent yes, my prominent glasses have made my face a little bit. <laughs> confused in the 8-bit conversion but there we go um jeremiah i have to say uh i know that you love to do this digital work and then print it um i i i personally feel this particular set of images would be best printed on a thermal printer mm. from a from a you know uh, like like uh because then you've got the whole you know game boy camera aesthetic absolutely yeah, from, a, from, a, from a from a from a checkout so. from a cashier kind of uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, like, yeah a thermal printer uh, from a uh, well, you know what? Credit card uh, machine. Uh, I will have it done by next week. Excellent. <laughs> I have a very small uh, thermal printer. Like Pretty, if it's in the palm of your hand. Pretty sure you even will. Better <laughs> that it's really bad. Oh yeah, did so. Actually, do you know what? I've never played because they sell. Uh, is it called Zinc? The the technology yep. that 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 you can get in therm in printers. That's a thermal print, isn't it? Yeah, but it's it's not the thermal printer that you were referring to. It's a color no. system. It's, bad as, it's not as bad as we're talking <laughs> about bad ones, really. Bad. <laughs> it's the equivalent of the. Uh, I have this camera. I think we've talked about it before. What's the uh, toy camera that records on uh, audio cassettes? 
Um, Ooh. Ooh. Way back when. The toy camera that records an audio <laughs> cassette. Uh, I'm talking no, about a, a film camera. Or a right, no, camera. I don't remember that. Yeah. I tell you, the other thing this reminds me of as well, not just the Game Boy stuff, but um, uh, it's, it's a slightly different aesthetic. But I remember in the early, it would, I know where I lived at the time, so it would have been the early 80s. And uh, a kid brought into school a printout and it would have been about six feet high. So you remember the the, the, the continuous computer oh, printout yeah, paper yeah, yeah, that yeah. was green and white lines mm. on it that was, you know, that was quite quite big sheets of Tractor paper. Tractor paper, yes. Tractor paper, yeah. And uh, using ASCII art, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. somebody had printed the Pink Panther, but about... <sighs> You know, the, the size <laughs> of an size. adult human. <laughs> well, life size. I, I've never mm-hmm. seen the Pink Panther in real life. Trust I don't me. know how tall it's, he is. But he's like, tall. <laughs> hey, Jeremiah lives in Hollywood. He knows the Pink Panther. Mm, yeah. so, so, yes, well, if you... Yes, he plays so, shorter on film. So, yeah. so yeah, so it definitely then a life-size ASCII art printout uh, of the Pink Panther on this continuous green and white paper. Well, on the side of it that was white, because there was one side was green and white, wasn't it? And one side was white. But you'd have to have been around that sort of thing in the early 80s to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I perfectly it's all know co- what it's all you're coming about. back. <laughs> it's all coming back. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll squeeze mine in next because um, uh, for me, that uh, th- this is the resulting photo. Uh, it's all about the light. And uh, this is what we're looking at ice. Um, this is on Lake Baikal in Siberia. Uh, the, Not sure oh, we are looking at it at the moment. Here we actually, go. Now we're looking at there it. There we go. That's it. Um, <laughs> So we're looking at ice shards that have been blown up by the wind and then frozen up. So like triangular shapes that are mm. um, coming out of, um, well, there's a lake beneath, but it's half, half snowed in. And um, mm. the, the light we're looking at um, is, is fairly close to what it was. There was a sunset. Uh, the light came in really low above the lake. It was really warm. Um, which made the contrast, the color contrast between the warm light and the and the snow, the cooler snow, very apparent. And uh, th- the camera didn't really want to play. I mean, when I when I shot this picture, this is the original. So um, <laughs> the camera was t- just did its thing with the automatic white balance, and I didn't really care because I knew that I wanted to correct it into a direction that I uh, the the way it felt anyway. So. That didn't bother me. Uh, what I looked for was to get the exposure right. And in right with right, I mean just from a technical side to have uh, have something in all of the values of the picture. So nothing blown out, nothing underexposed. <coughs> and and I was happy with the photo. And then here's a direct A-B comparison. And then I just... Yeah, went I, crazy I really edit. like this edit, Chris. Yeah, I, me too. I re- th- this is a really great edit because yeah. it, 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 I, I can I I can picture you know the 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 light from the edit, and and I know what you mean. Sometimes when you get that really warm just before sunset, like the cameras mm. just don't do it justice, do they? But mm. you've really. It, what what is you know a straight out of camera is almost your proverbial eighteen percent grey. Yes, <laughs> um, pretty you, much. You've, yes. you, you've 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 made it the the light on the shards of ice golden and the and the the ice and snow. I assume it's there's a bit of snow on top of the ice. Uh, you know, you know, reflecting the blue hour. So you've got both sunset and blue hour in mm. in the one image, which I think is a, a fantastic edit. And I did well, take well us done, through well the done. process. Take well, us through. Yeah, I did. Ex- exaggerate the the thing a bit so this is all in lightroom there's no plugins or anything um and i I brought the brightness down quite a bit i increased the contrast because the original again it's not very contrasty so i pulled that a bit and then what i did is um i still couldn't separate the warm sun from the cool snow so in lightroom there is the uh, luminance mask function so you can paint in warmth and then only apply mm. it to like a specific level of brightness in the photo so i made sure to apply a warm white balance only to the uh brightest parts of the picture so they would reflect in the eyes and i did the same thing with the snow around where i applied a slightly bluish cast to only the darker areas of the photo and that 
that's pretty much the process. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, Have you used uh, luminance masking uh, a lot? Um, I do use it, especially in photos where I want to um, s want to support a color cast in a specific brightness level, like a a light bulb that isn't quite warm enough in the photo, and uh, but it's also the brightest thing in the photo, so it's easy to just give that one bit of the picture a bit of a of a warmth boost without affecting. I, anything I, I else. think that yeah. Luminous masking, I think, is one of the hidden gems of, yes. you know, the, 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 the kind of editing process and most underused, I think. Uh, Absolutely. For, you know. Absolutely. And it, it, does, it does really come to, to its strength in these kind of situations where... Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Absolutely mm. great. Lovely. Thank you. So, next up are... Which, which direction do we go? This is... Finished to begin. Uh, this is yeah. This is me. This is uh, this next one. Do we go um, from right to left? Is, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, right is the finished one. So this is this is my edit. So uh, this is oh, uh, again shot on the same day, uh, but by the end of the day, uh, as I was walking back towards the railway station, I got caught in an absolute <laughs> torrential downpour as I was crossing a bridge. So. For those of you that know London, when you're on a bridge, there's no escaping the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty it's pretty open. Um it wasn't unpleasant. Um it was warm and it wasn't windy and I had a waterproof jacket on, but uh it was just yeah, the, the sky fell on my head basically. <laughs> and I just wanted to catch uh, catch this. I, I took this shot. I couldn't see um yeah, I, I put the camera right down at pavement level because I wanted to get the reflection from the pavement. I couldn't see uh what i was shooting really um because so it's a uh, it's the, a bicycle for the ones who listen uh in the rain on a road on a wet road there's a building in the background the bicyclist has a yellow high vis jacket high vis jacket on mm. and there's a and car the reflections behind, behind the wet yeah. reflections on the ground are yes. lovely yes so what I was trying to capture with here was the the gloominess, but but also mm. yeah the gloominess of the situation, but the the high visibility of the jacket, and then or just all the rain. You know, you can see in places the rain is bouncing. Uh, yeah. It's not just landing; it's bouncing. Um, so that's that's what I was aiming for. That's the edit I finished with. I I'm, I'm I keep getting drawn to the to the back wheel of the bicycle the because that's where the light of the car reflects oh, yeah. in the. Yes, in yeah. The there's street. a van, a van behind the bicycle, and the headlight from the van is reflecting through the the, the wheel. Yeah, it's, I love uh, it. I love the colours. I love the yeah. the way it's cut. Love so let's let's see how I'm you got pleased. there for a shot that I couldn't see to compose. I'm quite happy mm. with it actually. <laughs> so this is one step back. Uh, yeah, so this is the this is the straight out of camera JPEG again. So um, and, and this is a case where that Kodachrome recipe doesn't work so well because no. it looks kind of muddy. Mm. So, um, you know, yeah. it, it it wasn't it wasn't a great outcome. Uh, so it, what it's done what it's done is is it made it look muddy. So when I was when I was doing my own edit, I was working hard on the reds and the blues to bring those out. Yeah. I like the way you get, you cooled yeah. it down the the bluish cast in the in the reflections in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so much better. So, uh, and yeah. this is and, the and original. Can, yes, which is a pretty flat looking you know, raw file. Yeah. So I mean, it's plenty. Yeah, yeah. The the good news is there's plenty of information to work with, mm. <laughs> but it's not something that I would would ever use. Um, so you know, I do like that. It's one of the reasons I shoot raw and JPEG is that. You know, uh, for a lot of you know, for a lot of pictures, you know, if it's just for posting on yeah you know, on the internet to share with people and stuff like that, you can just simply post the JPEG. Mm -hmm. um, but when you when when you want to do some editing, you want to make more of it, then all of that information from the raw file is there as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I pretty much always have my camera set to raw plus JPEG. So the edit did you did that in Lightroom? Uh, no, no, because for well, for, for one thing, I don't use Lightroom actually. Um, oh, I, so yeah. in this case, the edit was uh, on my phone. So what the, um, the the first edit was just in the Mac Photos app because I knew I just wanted to make some global edits to color channels, mm -hmm. um, the or color um, colors themselves, specific colors. Uh, this one uh, was edited on my phone because I wanted to do some selective. Uh, 
uh, sort of edits I wanted to to so so what there is is the there's some global edits for color and then there's a selective edit around the subject the the man on the bicycle um to to make that a bit brighter and and to draw him out and some some extra saturation on on the high vis jacket uh, to to make it pop a little bit uh, and I did all of that uh in um oh now what's it called polar i think is the app mm. i used for that mm. polar um, with uh, two and hours. I, I, mm. yes polar with two hours yes um and that's a yeah that's an app that has some some good uh selective adjustments available to it um yeah as, as i said i don't use lightroom although when selective adjustments is the one thing that a lot of apps don't do so well but but polar does and, and Polar is, uh, and, and I think, available on almost every platform. So you can mm -hmm. even use it in the browser. It's almost everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I did try Snapseed, but interestingly enough, Snapseed isn't really working on my phone anymore. Um, well, I can't. I, uh, so I, I, I'm not sure what the official status of Snapseed is as a product these days, whether it's been end of life um, oh no or, or whether oh, it's <laughs> well, Imar, Imar's getting, getting have a little uh, panic here a little bit I'm going to have to investigate attack. this further <laughs> uh, but it's uh, uh, it's not working it's, it, every time I open Snapseed on my phone at the moment it crashes so. <sighs> you've got the iPhone 12 so maybe with the new phone it's just no, not mine, mine works does it but I, it's working on 11, I think but... it's on its way out that's <sighs> the rumor Dear. no so, yeah. This is a uh, Snapseed is a go to for me as well. So, um, yeah, oh, I, think, I don't I mean, do it has a been lot of for almost everybody, hasn't it? For, for a decade, mm. you know, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, mm. I'll bring up another one of mine. If it's still ice and snow related, because that's, that's <laughs> I love doing this. Um, <laughs> so this is a snowscape in uh, Svalbard up in the north. And what I love about the place is, and what I wanted to bring out here is the, yeah, the, 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 the extraordinary quality of the light, because there's mm. always a bit of uh, uh, ice crystals and things in the air, and then the ice, the, the ice diffuses the light in a way, and then the sun is fairly low uh, because it's so high up in the north, and that skims over these very special mountains that are everywhere and um it's yeah it's it's uh, just a just a snowscape mountain kind of shot and uh when i took it it's the same thing as with the other shot when i took it this is what it looked like and it was pretty oh, much wow. um yeah a i think bright, I only, sunny day <laughs> yeah. a, a, well a sunny-ish day because there are clouds and uh, you can get an idea of the of the uh, light distribution on the hills but it's not mm. coming out quite well and i wanted to capture it in a way that would again still have all the detail everywhere i i think i brought the exposure a bit up because the camera insisted on uh, lower exposure but i wanted it a bit higher and then when i came back home i rem I realized that that was a big mistake, but luckily I had kept captured everything, so I made it a lot more moody, brought down the brightness so moody, of the of the it? blue tones, and um, yeah, good memories. Yeah, it looks like the the blue sky is is now a sort of dark indigo, isn't it? Yeah. So Almost, you, yes. you've have you, you've so I guess pushed the color a bit towards the, the the purple, and you've reduced the luminance on it quite significantly. I guess a little bit, yes. Yeah. And it's um, yeah, it's it's it just looks like it could be moonlight instead of doesn't it? Instead it, of daylight possibly, night. yeah. It could it could be a long exposure shot at night, couldn't it? Actually? But the most or, or, yeah. the most important quality again is the softness of the way the light hugs the mountains. That, that is, is just, uh, yeah. that is just, um, yeah, that's it's beautiful. just amazing up there. <laughs> it's just amazing up there. So, um, and I, and I've, I've, and doing all these kind of wintry things, I learned so much about dealing with contrast, dealing with, uh, with snow and exposing it well and showing it well, um, with preserving the detail in it, which isn't always easy. So, mm. Anyway, do you do you expose for the snow? Um, 
There are several ways to approach this. I could expose it so everything is kind of in the middle zone, in the gray zone, in the 18% mm -hmm. zone, and then fix it from there. Um, in this case, I deliberately put it towards the right end of the histogram, but to, to an extent where there would still be enough headroom to not lose anything. And mm. as everything is almost uniform in brightness in this original shot, um, <laughs> that's fairly easy to do. You don't have any really harsh peaks that will... Um, <laughs> Where you Just a quick question that. on technique for exposure then, Chris, because yes. I know that you are a DSLR shooter. So when I want to expose something and it's it's slightly tricky, um, because I have a camera with an electronic viewfinder, mm -hmm. um, I can do that and I can even put zebras on if I want to, even for stills, I think. Um, so I, I can be pretty confident uh, in my viewfinder that I'm not pushing anything too far i'm not i'm not blowing anything out how, how you, you mentioned the uh the histogram there have you got a live view histogram on the screen or something like that yes, yes and i use it oh, okay. um so histogram is the secret weapon for good exposure or for l not even good exposure but for helpful exposure because um when i took these photos i kind of knew where i wanted to take them and i also knew mm -hmm. how to expose them so I could take them there. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the histogram is worth, without really going into any detail here now, but uh, it's really <laughs> worth learning how, how this works because even, even on your smartphone, there will be camera apps that you can enable an histogram for and you can see mm -hmm. how the exposure is perceived by the camera. The problem is the display on the back of your, of your, of your camera or on your smartphone is not really giving you an exact representation of what the camera sees. Yeah. So it's yeah. a bit of a guessing game. Like if you take night night shots and your displays do bright, you will underexpose them because you think the photos are brighter than they are being taken. So you, it's, it's yeah, really worth the, learning that tool because it gives you a... Um, it tells you something about the reality of the exposure. So, so, so top tip for, for EVF users, um, when I got a new camera late last year, um, I, I wasn't happy with the viewfinder uh, because it was way too much blue uh, in, in the way it rendered inside the, in the viewfinder and it was too bright. Um, in I'm lucky in, in my camera, uh, all of those settings are editable. <laughs> Uh, and so I was able to correct, um, co correct inadverted commas. It's not technically correct. It's just more accurate. It's just more like what I see when when the shot is taken. So I, I now have I'm able to have a, a viewfinder that that looks like what will be captured. Um, uh, it's it's even a um, it, it's it's even sort of hot hot swappable and assignable to a function button on my camera, which confused the hell out of me not so long ago when i was thinking all my all my pictures are coming out much different than they look like in the viewfinder and i'd inadvertently switched off <laughs> and <laughs> make it look like a jpeg option in the viewfinder and um, not, to, but, not to scare anyone uh, who's listening to this um with most photos with the majority of your photos you will be just fine but if you oh, get yes. into into the realm of uh, everything being white or like things being weird, different from from your daily experience. That's when these technical tools will help you. That's when you. Yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, that was a bit of a deep technical dive. I think um, what Chris and Adrian are really trying to say, Imar, is trust no one. <laughs> trust no one. I just Thanks trust for myself. putting this into context. <laughs> So, uh, but uh, yeah, so, least of so, all the designers. Yeah, I think we, we should probably do we should probably do uh, a show on hints and tips for all of this stuff. Yeah, because yeah. we could talk mm, about yeah, live we histograms. Could. We could talk about sure. scopes. We could Absolutely. talk about false Let's color and zebras and all of that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is a photo show, isn't it? This is not a technical <laughs> show today. Sorry, it's a photo show. So well, it's <laughs> quite technical. Um, Imar, these are from these are by you. Yeah, uh, the fabulous <laughs> one at the very bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's my kind of finished article. That's your go-to. So, yeah, I was not. <laughs> I was not um, going for realism in this. Obviously, um, I just I I love a wind-blown tree, 
Uh, who doesn't love a windblown Absolutely. tree? Absolutely. And tree. I love a sun flare. <laughs> no, the tree loves it too. Um, and I, I love a sun flare and, and uh, both things are in this picture. So, um, yeah, and the mood and um, lots of texture in the subject. So I put lots of texture in the sky. It was a bright blue sunny day again. Um, started to darken that sky down loads. And, um, and there was just... There was beautiful color in, on the ground. This in the looks almost like a night sky. The you know, a little bit. Mm, it yeah, does, yeah. yeah. It's got that indigo look again, like the one yeah. of yours, Chris. Yeah. yeah, it does. And and a moon, right. which is a sun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very shiny uh, moon sun. And then um, the black and white one um, that's there was literally. I did that for Jeremiah just for moody. Uh, depressing. Uh, I like I, it. Just but to I, show I, that you can wait, turn wait, any wait, you can turn you any think, blue sky into a dark. Wait, moody. wait. When you think Jeremiah, you think moody and Under depressing. Irish. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> just to. Um, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> just because you know, you know, our discussion last week about the the kind of um, the darkness and the beauty of the darkness as much as the light. I thought, that's right, true. well, call it the mystery. You know, right. Or that sort of um, Irish sadness that you go on about. <laughs> I thought, what, right, me? okay, let's play up to it. <laughs> All right. I've read enough Irish poets to back that. Yeah, the um, other images, well, the one at the start of the group there is uh, the one that came out of the camera, I right. think. Yeah, so it was really sunny. Um, just came out of my uh, this iPhone. Is, this is your um, iPhone. That's my iPhone, which, yeah. Which, yeah. interesting enough, has already applied some... It, Built in HDR, so you get a lot of detail in the bright, in the dark. Yeah, the sky which I don't of... really like. Actually, I don't really like that. Can, I have can to we say. can we turn um, that off? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, we can. And you know, I, I've I've kept it for a little while now because I just turned it on when we talked about it a couple of months back. But um, I don't think I like it. So I'm going to um, now it went underexposed when I was taking it because what it showed me was too bright. So I kind of mm. pulled down the okay. exposure. Is this next year's again? Um, it was mixtures and snapseed. There's and your this, mixtures. Um, yeah. yeah. There's my mixtures, yeah. Um, Though I love the color in this, the, the final yeah, result. Um, color. Sure, a couple of them. You know, yeah, it, just to kind of illustrate how you can take something s so many different ways. So you will, you will take a photo through two, three different apps to get to the result. Yeah, I kind of have a formula of my own that I worked out, which is... If maybe maybe that's why my mojo is gone. That I'm just following my own formula now. I don't know, but um, yeah. Oh, sometimes that is yeah. all you need. And yeah, yeah. So these are these were particularly nice. Um, I suppose uh, raw images to have to start with. So that's a start. You know. I really like. Yeah. It. So hmm, happy with that. Did, the, like, did um, the sun flare color. in the original or Celtic? Did, did you add those flares here? No, um, yeah, but say that's a little bit of flair there. I kept my I kept being drawn to the kind of um, center just to the left there that it sort of looks like um, it looks like light, but it isn't. It's a rock. <laughs> um, I was wondering about that myself, yeah, actually, whether it's I think in the black yeah. and white one, it looks a bit more like a rock, but in the color yeah. one, it looks a bit more like a flare of some it sort. It looks like it's coming from the sun, but it actually yeah. isn't. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Just, uh, so uh, with regard to the, the workflow, um, mm. the workflow means nothing without the composition. And I really love the composition of this shot. Yes. I really love the way that the, the rock in the foreground acts as a as a leading line to the tree and, and stuff like that. So it's um, it, there, there's definitely, you know, ha however you might feel about it, whether you, you feel this is a mojo shot or not, even mm. the, 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 mm. the composition is, is, is spot on for me. Yeah, sometimes I I do try to compose it nicely when I take it. It doesn't always. Um, I'm not always kind of lucky enough to get it right. But um, yeah, that's probably um, both of those were probably pretty good hits on the composition. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, yeah. I I brought one more ice series again from Svalbard, which is this one. And speaking oh. of composition i'm totally absolutely happy about the composition of this oh hold on I, yeah, oh no it's on the screen fabulous. um but the the secret is that i 
probably, and this is with a telephoto, this is from a ship, this is, again, Svalbard. Wow. Um, but the secret is that I've taken probably 25 photos with different compositions of that same face of, uh -huh. the, of the mountain. Uh -huh. And because uh, I wasn't, I was absolutely not sure which one would be it. So um, mm. I did a bit of spray and pray and tried to... Um, <laughs> no, no, no. What you did is you worked the scene, Chris. No. <laughs> you worked the scene. Well, it, uh, this the thing is that if I had worked the scene, I would have ended up with this one. But the fact is this is probably the third shot into that uh, into those 25 so I, I think we can cut you some slack if you were on a ship that was bobbing up <laughs> yeah. and down and using a telephoto <laughs> lens I mean half the time you wouldn't have been pointing it at the mountain at all no, it, wasn't, it wasn't too hard to, to get a steady conversation <laughs> you know what I, I really love about this is that you can't even really tell where the sky meets the mountain it's gorgeous yes yeah. that's it's the one like thing the cloud is kind of weird together. the way this the way this mountain ridge curves mm. into the background and this is the original there's almost no contrast oh, wow. hardly anything yeah. to see there so i had to bring out a bit of the of the contrast to give the eye something oh, to to grab it's onto really yeah it's mm. a nice edit it mm. is a good edit. yeah you, you definitely got some really good edits on this one and i was lucky to be in the right spot with the right light and everything but this is again yeah. the svalbard light is just it's a mind-boggling mm. just amazing mm. Um, we have one left up here that, um, Adrian shot this one. Oh, uh, this is, yeah, this is my also ran shot. Okay. So this, this is one where I wimped out and I didn't <laughs> think I'd be able to do better than the straight out to camera JPEG. Wow, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> this is same day taken probably about three minutes before the one of the cyclists. Um, this was when I was, uh, right in the middle of the bridge. Um, actually, or, or maybe on the northern end of the bridge, uh, and uh, this is a tower that's got it shooting from the north end of Blackfriars Bridge towards a, a full glass tower, which I think is occasionally called the Cigar, because as you know, in the City of London, we like to give our buildings silly names. <laughs> yes. Um, this one was only finished few, two, three years ago. Um, if that, uh, it's about 50 stories tall, so it's also currently one of the tallest buildings in the city, uh, and it's probably the uh, well, so I was going to say probably the tallest on the second on the south bank, but clearly that would be second to the shard, which also stands on the and the, on the and south the street bank. is wet again, which mm, I believe in Hollywood when they yeah. shoot movies they pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> wet down, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's because it truck. doesn't rain in Hollywood. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very expensive. Make it rain. <laughs> By the way, we're doing that lesson last now. Great song. Is, is that is it is was it a uh, an aesthetic that is 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 less in fashion than these days? No, then? no, no. It's just like water. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> feels it feels just, kind of abusive, you yeah. know, when we're running out of water to bring in ten thousand gallon trucks. Of yeah, rain uh, is great to take pictures in, though, because it's just saturated. I guess the fire the service. So I hear. Well. So I hear. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, do you know what? I watched uh, about five years too late, but my wife and I watched La La Land uh, last mm. night, and I don't recall seeing a single wet down in that. Uh, <laughs> I know. All right, like that is movie. our photos. Wow, we, we managed to get through them in a halfway decent time. That's good. Um, oh, me of little faith. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't trust that we would make it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, thanks to the three of you to, for, for bringing your photos. This was exciting. I like well, thank you as well. I like looking behind the curtain. This is good. <laughs> this is very cool. So with that, we do have a few picks of the week. And uh, I'm going to start with mine, which is, hold on, I have to switch this over to the browser. Here we go. <clears throat> which is a Twitter account I hinted to last week. It's the Coda Chrome Forever account. Uh, goes on Twitter at, under at Kodak Forever. And it uh, says it's collections of my scanned vintage Kodachrome slides and photos taken mm. by great photographers Andre Rope, Charles W. Cushman, Dave Gelinas, John Vachon, and so on. 
And um, it is uh, someone who keeps posting Kodachrome shots from the 50s, 60s. Um, oh, and they oh, don't God, just... They're awesome, aren't they? They, they don't That's just great. just show you the colors and the, the aesthetic of Kodachrome, mm. of real Kodachrome, but they also, of course, are little time capsules that show you the the, the advertising back then, the cars, the the fashion. Um, yeah. I mean, just look at that. The, wow. the, the traffic lights. Yeah, the, I mean, it's, all, it's awesome, isn't it? I, I personally, I never, ever got to shoot with Kodachrome before it went away i just oh. wasn't well enough educated or experienced in in photography at that point it was something i, I picked up much later <laughs> um but it's it, it is it is awesome isn't it just to so see if you things. if you want to follow mm. that account they post i don't know a handful of pictures every day and mm. it's just beautiful stuff the colors nice. i mean the way it's the lovely. colors pop the way i don't know how to explain this but the way kodachrome um treats colors is like it 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 enhances them it over hypes them slightly but still keeps mm. them real the skin yeah. tones are amazing the saturation mm. is amazing um yeah it's kodachrome is very or was as, very special yeah as as mm. someone who began his commercial photographic career using kodachrome uh i i miss it um it, it was, it's just, it's a dazzling, dazzling film. Of course, you had to send it to Kodak to yes. get processed. No one hour lasts. Uh, <laughs> but but my, my Kodachromes, which are, you know, in sheets, uh, stored dry, look as beautiful as the day they came back from Kodak. They are so sharp. And talk about, there's, mm -hmm. you can't really see any grain, especially in the 25, the Kodachrome 25. And one thing a, to to yes. remember here or to keep in mind is that uh, this is film. This is the way it comes out of the camera. There is no yes, uh, yeah. no, no correction, no nothing, no enhancements. Yeah. This is the way the film renders the colors yeah. and the contrasts. And it's yeah, because you didn't you it, you didn't um, develop your own Kodachrome, as as no. we just no. said. So so this isn't this isn't somebody's in you know tried and tested interpretation no. of how they prefer to develop with their chems. Yeah. I mean this And this there's is... no burning and dodging here because yeah. as soon yeah. as you would print it even a reverse print, you know, on a Cibachrome, which I, I used to do, it changes. You know, um, it changes. The only way really to see it large is to project it. And um, we've lost that uh you know, slide projectors. My dad might still have one. I don't know if he's got... I know he's <laughs> still got, got lots of slides. I've, got, I, I've yeah. got one, but I use it for effects and things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is my contribution. Kodak, Kodachrome forever. I love this. I, I usually tend to retweet those pictures because they give me a smile and they hopefully give other people a little smile mm -hmm. too. Um... Adrian, your pick of the week. Uh, well, I have to admit, uh, this is a bit of a team effort. And, uh, my, my pick of the week uh, was really just the, the idea of uh, getting out in bad weather to shoot. As, as when well, We've talked through a few of my most recent photographs today, and, and you know, which were, I, I think, better for having been shot in bad weather. Uh, I was a little bit worried because although my camera is weather sealed, with the lens I had that day mm -hmm. isn't. <laughs> um, but uh, but happily they survived. Um, and Jeremiah uh, gave me the the link uh, for the for the pick of the week, which is uh, Todd Hedo. Hido Hedo. However, Hi. however. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, who uh, and and yeah, just yeah. Fo following the links, you can see yeah, lo lots of photos, uh, amazing photos shot uh, in in bad weather. You you could almost say in some of the cases that it, they are photos of the weather rather mm. uh, as the subject. <laughs> it, it, and Todd adds uh, in many of those, it's almost like the weather is part of the photo. It's 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 on the yeah. lens. It's everywhere. Mm. So it distorts yes, yeah, things. Yeah, water the on the lens and stuff like that as That's well. That's gorgeous. Yes. Mm. 
uh, the yeah the water on the lens is an interesting thing isn't it so uh, yeah technically it's you, you absolutely wouldn't want it but mm. you can use it as an artistic thing so i think it's, it's fantastic very cool stuff so so thank you jeremiah for for Sorry. helping me visualize my oh, pick of the week <laughs> all right and uh jeremiah you have a pick of the week as well my pick of the week is is basically a recall from last week where i forgot cordis and sandriker uh, their website and whatnot we were talking about just outside the frame. And these guys are master artists in outside the frame as well as inside the frame. Their work is about uh, recreating classic photos and shooting the processes of uh, same. Oh, yeah. They, 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 build all, they, they build they build all this stuff is yeah. is, is truly wow. astonishing isn't yeah, it yeah. um i i it's, it's been a while um since since i i've seen it but but as we look at this the, the behind the scenes shots and they've got that they've recreated tanks in tiananmen square uh they've recreated a plane just about well they, they the recreated sets that would uh, result in these kind of photos that's I love the, the moon landing thing. boot, the boot print moon, uh, the moon landing as well. That's a good one. I like that one. Nine eleven. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the <laughs> Concord, like, um, Co Concord <laughs> crash. Nessie. 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 It's a good one. Nessie. A bit like yeah. um, the Chapmans, but without the kind of grotesqueness. Aren't they? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, they they are they they're, they're very famous photos as well. A lot of them. I mean, there's yeah. there's, oh, yeah. the there's Cartier the Bresson's <laughs> man jumping across a puddle. There's the Brilliant. is it Robert Capa, the Spanish Civil War soldier? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is yeah. Capa, isn't it? Um, yeah. The uh, and and of course uh, that that became uh, a very very um, controversial. Um, photograph didn't it that spanish yes. soldier oh yes uh, along did. with a lot of kappa's work has been questioned in the last few years but anyway that is wow That's i like excellent. it yeah there's uh, some awesome stuff here yeah <laughs> the... no, look. <laughs> it's, it's 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 even more fun if you know the photos if you yeah, are familiar it, it with is, all yeah, these photos it, yeah if you know the photos that that cool. makes Great a real fun. real uh, I, yeah stuff. i encourage everybody to really look at at, at how adept they are at doing that also brings attention to the original photo which is nice because they do call back and respect mm. the integrity of the original um and basically it's it's appropriated art which i think is fantastic in terms of driving the story of photography yes. forward mm -hmm. So, um, Imar asked to skip today's pick yes. of the week. Apologies, I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Slap on wrist. This, this show has been long I'll enough anyway. I'll bring you anyway. next time. Um, so, roast. <laughs> so what her, do we... Her roast is a pick of the week. Right, what do we <laughs> oh, take yeah, away from this Oh yeah, you can all come for dinner episode? tomorrow. What is our takeaway? Go out it into the rain. Away. That is... Don't be afraid guys, of what you capture. Yeah. Go actually. for editing. Yeah, mm -hmm. editing is is often the thing that make, allows you to make something into something completely different. Mm -hmm. That is an adventure as much as the photo. So um, I don't think the photo is done when you press the button. I think no, far from, always unless you're far using Kodachrome. That's for sure. <laughs> unless you use Kodachrome, that's a very good point. So anyway, we'll be back in a week from now, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for. Uh, Thanks for allowing us in. Until then, <laughs> take care. Yeah, bye -bye. take care. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.